Hey guys, so today I'm going to prove to you what I've always believed to be true, but this time I've actually done research and now have evidence. Uh, most times I just uh, say what I feel like saying. But I decided, you know, I actually wanted to solve the mystery of why are so many cards being banned recently? So it's like, what has changed? Now, of course, I've criticized Wizard of the Coast for not being creative, as you can see by the number of cards they reprinted. I mean, there's just reprinting 2,000 cards plus a set now, which is, uh, huh, it's pretty lazy. But in my opinion, I, I do kind of understand there's so many magic cards. There's not much room for creativity. So to sell new magic cards, you have to make them more powerful than the old ones, right? Why would people want to buy new magic cards if they did not need them for their standard decks or their EDH decks? So I do feel like you have to push the power level of the cards to sell them. I mean, that makes sense to me. Now, I did not know these people existed. And I'm not talking about uh, other topics I talk about. I I'm always so surprised when I learn about the MTG judges and their lack of background checks. I'm perpetually surprised about Magic the Gathering because in real life, um, this type of stuff would not happen in any business. So I think Hasbro needs to do a better job monitoring their Wizard of the Coast department because they're not living in reality. So let me just kind of put um, this in place. So in 2017, Sahili and Copycat was a deck. Guardian, Felderland Guardian. And that was a deck that was doing really, really well in standard, and it kind of warped the format. So to prevent this from happening in the future, I mean, remember, we also had energy decks, for goodness sake, at the time. So you have to imagine how ridiculous it was, right? Energy, Sahili. This wasn't like a great time in play design. Now, I personally like the copycat deck, but there's no interaction. And everyone's just doing their own thing, which is what people do right now. And look at the top decks. They are companion decks or they're ramp decks. There's no like block. I mean, it's so ridiculous. Everyone's just ramping up until Nyssa and then playing their Hydro Colossus and then ramping up some more. So then they can play that giant hippo. It's like, okay. Uh, so like, hey, it's almost like when I was younger and we didn't have someone, anyone to play with, we would play um, this game where we just, you know, hit... We can try to do 20 points of damage as fast as possible with our decks. That's what it feels like in Magic now, except instead of doing damage, we're ramping up until we can get to 10 mana to do something insane. And the worst is on MTG Arena when you... I mean, I basically do not play ramp decks, but sometimes you gotta get that gold for the blue-green, you know? You gotta do enough, you gotta cast enough 25 green creatures or something like that. So... The worst is a ramp deck versus a ramp deck. <laughs> My God, there's no interaction at all. <laughs> it's just whoever goes first and can ramp the hardest will win eventually. You know, <laughs> there's no like attacking. There's just getting life. It's fun. It's fun in once in a while, which is when I play. I don't play it every day, obviously. But I wondered, hmm, let me go look at the history of every single banned card. So before I realized there was a play design team specifically to figure out if cards are broken, again, that's their only job. So they didn't do their job well. They were created sometime in 2017, 2019. A lot of cards got banned. 2018 was semi-okay. But as I looked at all the years, so I went from 2020 all the way down to 2000, which I'm going to screenshot for you. I realized it wasn't always this way. So what point, like at what point, what year did cards start getting like banned like crazy? Like every new set has a card that will be banned. I think the companions have already been banned in certain formats or one companion, Lewis in particular. Lewis, I'm going to call him. The cat, the nightmare cat has been banned. And I don't think... The other ones are going to stay alive in Legacy because there's too many crazy things you can do on Legacy and Vintage and, and so on. But I was wondering, okay, so what exactly happened in 2017 
2018 and 2019, and now we're in 2020, we don't have as many bans in 2020 because we're not done the year. We still have May seven months left. Wow, seems like forever when you quarantine at home. But yeah, so I'm expecting the number of cards that we banned to at least double from, at, le at the very least, double from what is currently banned for 2020. But then I looked at the graph, I looked at all these things, and I realized, huh, this kind of happened in 2017. What, what was new in 2017 that did not exist in 2016, 2015, 20, and so on, in 2000? Oh, the play design team. Wait a second. Where did I see this name? Oh, wait a second. Wasn't, aren't these the guys who pushed Oko? So imagine we as a company have a problem with broken cards, okay? Cards that are too strong. Well, we would hire this, these uh, 25 experts, right? We'd pay them a full-time salary to just dirtle around. I mean, given you know some of these articles, they, it really seems like they're wedge-like individuals who are not working very hard, to be honest, which would explain a lot. There's so many, A, there's so many of them that none of them thought companion. So I can explain why companion is broken very simply. So Vampiric Tutor, one of the best cards, and a card that's currently spiking, by the way, is one black, and you get to tutor for a card and put it on top of your library. You just lost one black mana, you, probably your first turn, if you're lucky. You lost life, and... You lost tempo, right? Because you had to play them. You had to play it out, and you're not exactly doing anything with that card. The card is just on top of your deck. Plus, you lost a card because the vampiric tutor didn't trade one for one, right? No new card came to your hand. Opt is a one for one trade, but it's not a tutor. Demonic tutor is a tutor, and it's a one for one trade but it costs one in the black and is considered one of the best cards in Magic the Gathering ever printed. So, yeah. So now imagine, but you, you also need that Demonic Tutor in your hand and you need to lose the tempo, which is two mana. So now let me imagine a card that it's always in your opening hand. So there's no randomness to it. It's always in your opening hand. That would be really good, right? But what if you didn't have to sacrifice a card for that? You actually plus one the card, which costs three mana. Typically, when you want to draw two cards, because that's the plus one, right? You need to draw two cards. You need a card. You need to play a card that says draw two cards for you to actually gain one card. Okay, that's just how it is. Like, so Tommy's something is probably the best example I have. It's a gorgeous card, by the way, and foil. Two in a blue, you draw two cards. A lot of magic cards have existed like this for a very long time. To draw one card, you have to pay free mana. To tutor one to one on the most powerful card in the game, Demonic Tutor, you would need to pay two mana. So to draw a card and to tutor, I would say you have to pay five mana, and it would look like this. Draw two cards, um, or search your library for a card, and draw a card, and it would cost five mana. But what if this is even better, right, than a five mana tutor, which I just explained, which would still probably be playable in EDH. So my tutor that I just created draws you a card, and you get to tutor for a card, and it costs five mana. Not bad. And it probably would definitely be playable in EDH. It's not playable in standard, but maybe playable in standard. I don't know. You would get two cards, and one of the cards you would receive, you could tutor for. But the problem is, you know, it's slow, and we got to wait until turn five, or we're going to survive until turn five against red deck wins. And uh, why don't we have uh, it for free? Let me just explain what happened. If you play one of these companions, like Lewis, I have, I, I call him Lewis. I have Lewis, and I, I have two decks on MTG Arena because he's so difficult to beat. That card is so difficult to beat on MTG Arena. So eventually I just had to say, oh, well, I got to make the deck because it's either this or ramp, and I really don't want to play ramp because it takes forever to get my gold coins if I play ramp. I'll just play this uh, pseudo aggro uh, deck. So the problem with him is very simple. It's turn one, I start with eight cards in my hand on the play or on the draw, I would start with nine. 
one of the cards I tutored. And there was no randomness, there's no side effect, there's nothing. The fact that this play design team missed the companions and why they're so powerful is ridiculous. The, okay, you, you ask, oh, how would you fix them? Uh, very simply, I would say, if you play a companion, um, then you can either put in your hand. So again, you cannot target this card. Like you can't dot seize it, you can't get, so it's kind of hard to interact. There's no interaction until the card is played, but at that time, you know, I mean, supposedly you're up one card, right? So if I hard counter that, I'm down a card and you gain a, you've gained a card advantage. So companions could have, I mean, to any dummy in the play design thing, they should have understood why the core concept was, why it was wrong. A, it's a tutor. It's a one for one tutor plus a draw spell. Plus a plus two draw spell. Which is insane. Plus the serum powder, which is always in your hand that can reset your hand with no disadvantage. So you're talking about a seven mana tutor ability. At the very least. Uh, what? The blank, right? And the card itself is good. Uh, so the uh, Lewis card, for instance, you can play cards from your graveyard and you know it has a certain deck and you just want small creatures right that die i was playing my mtg arena i was having a lot of fun playing the new decks i actually don't look at the gold mtg go fist and i got tired of lo lo losing to uh ramp and then this lewis deck the um, other companion the ramp the hippo i was like oh what the what the <laughs> what's going on it's just so painful to play against because there's very little interaction, right? Because I play the deck now too. <laughs> because I had no choice. I need to get my gold coins. I was, and that's how you know something is unbalanced. It, just like JC Mind Sculptor, you're either playing JC Mind Sculptor or you're not. So there's all the decks that have Jace in it and then everything else. And all the decks that have Jace in it have a 55, 60% win rate. And that's what's happening now. I mean, when. Look, in 2002, no cards were banned. Wow. 2001, they had an extended format. And then Fact or Fiction, which isn't even that great of a card. But, I, okay, whatever. Something changed in 2017. And I can tell you what it was. It's a play design. Like, wait a second. Since 2017, and including 2017, we had more cards banned and more formats than ever before. But we're paying these people specifically so we don't have to ban cards. There's something wrong. And these people are taking the power level of Oko, which was a okay card when first published. And they're, they're like, oh, that card's too weak. Let's, let's make it stronger. That would defeat the whole purpose of the play design team, which is supposed to make cards weaker. Bye, guys.